Play boys and girls. This is Miss Kimbrell and I'm sitting outside on my back porch and it is a beautiful day. So I want to remind you of something before we start reading today. When it is this pretty outside, get outside, exercise, enjoy this weather, enjoy this beautiful weather and sunshine. Um, and I hope that y'all all are doing well. I know you're tired of being cooped up, but when it's pretty like this, make sure you're getting outside. It's wonderful. Um, I just want to go over a few things before we start reading chapters eight and nine today. So Nick, the main character, who is the class clown, has created a new word for a pen. Friendle. And him and a lot of other friends that he's gotten on board with it have promised. They even did a oath, which is a promise that says they will no longer use the word pen. They are going to use the word friendle. Okay, so this is serious business. How do you think Mrs. Granger, Nick's teacher, is feeling about this? Well, she says that he is disrupting her class in the last chapter, so she's probably not very happy if we can infer that at this point in the book. And so I, I want you to form an opinion about Nick at this time. Do you think that Nick is being disrespectful and wrong by trying to create a new word for a word that already exists? Okay, or do you think he's being creative and um, a leader with his abilities in creating a new word. So just try to form an opinion as we read the book today. Here's chapter eight, Mightier Than the Sword. Two days later, the photographer came to take class pictures. The fifth grade picture would be taken last, right after lunch. That gave Nick and his secret agents plenty of time, and they whispered something into the ear of every fifth grader. All the individual pictures had been taken, and finally it was time for the group picture. Everyone was lined up on the auditorium stage, everyone's hair looked great, and everyone was smiling. But when the photographer said, say cheese, no one did. Instead, every kid said, Brindle! And they held one up for the camera to see. The photographer was out of film. So that shot was the only fifth grade group picture he took. Six of the fifth grade teachers were not pleased and Mrs. Granger was furious. No one had really wanted to make the teachers mad. It was just fun. It also got all the kids in the school talking about the new word. And when people pick up a new word, they say it all the time. The kids at Lincoln Elementary School liked Nick's new word a lot, but not Mrs. Granger. The day after the class picture, she made an announcement to each of her classes, and she posted a notice on the main bulletin board by the office. Okay, so this is the note she posted. Anyone who has heard using the word friendle instead of the word pen will stay after school and write this sentence 100 times. I am writing this punishment with a pen, Mrs. Granger. But that just made everyone want to use Nick's new word even more. Staying after school with the lone Granger became a badge of honor. There were kids in her classroom every day after school. It went on like that for a couple of weeks. One day near the end of seventh period, Mrs. Granger asked Nick to come talk to her after school. This is not detention, Nicholas. I just want to talk. Nick was excited. It was kind of like a conference during a war. One side waves a white flag and the generals come out and talk. General Nicholas Allen. Nick liked the sound of it. He stuck his head in Mrs. Granger's doorway after school. You wanted to talk with me? Yes, Nicholas. Please come in and sit down. When he was settled, she looked at him and said, Don't you think this friendle business has gone far enough? It's just a disruption to the school, don't you think? Nick swallowed hard, but he said, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. It's just fun, and it really is a real word. It's not a bad word, just different. And besides, it's how words really change, isn't it? That's what you said. Mrs. Granger sighed. It is how a word could be made up brand new, I suppose. But the word pen, should it really be replaced by, by that other word? The word pen has a long, rich history. It comes from the Latin word for feather, pinna. It started to become our word pen because quills made from feathers were some of the first writing tools ever made. It's a word that comes from somewhere. It makes sense, Nicholas. But Frindle makes just as much sense to me, said Nick. 
And after all, didn't somebody just make up the word henna too? That got a spark from Mrs. Granger's eyes, but all she said was, then you are not going to stop this. And Nick looked right in her eyes and said, well, me and, I mean, a bunch of my friends and I took an oath about using the word and we have to keep our promise. And besides, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I like my word. Nick tried to look brave, like a good general should. Very well then, I thought it would end up this way. Mrs. Granger pulled a fat white envelope from her desk drawer and held it up. This is a letter I have written to you, Nicholas. Nick held out his hand thinking she was going to give it to him, but she didn't. I am not going to send it to you until all of this is over. I want you to sign your name and put today's date across the back of the envelope. When you read it, whenever that may be, you will know it is the same letter and that I have not made any changes to it. This is weird, Nick said to himself, but to Mrs. Granger, he said, sure. And he signed his name in his best cursive and put the date under it. Then Mrs. Granger stood up abruptly and said, then that is all for today, Nicholas, and may the best word win. There was a frown on her face, but her eyes, her eyes were very different, almost happy. And Nick was halfway down the hall before it hit him. She likes this war and she wants to win real bad. Walking to school the next day, Pete had a great idea. How about we see if we can get every kid in the whole fifth grade to go up and ask Mrs. Granger, can I borrow a friendle? You mean Mrs. Granger, may I borrow a friendle, said Dave. Got to use good grammar. Don't want to upset dangerous Grangerous. Sounds good to me, said Nick. She can't keep everyone after school, can she? So this is a picture of Nick and Mrs. Granger meeting. So we come to this part of the book and Mrs. Granger has several nicknames. One is the Lone Granger. And now we find out that her other nickname is Dangerous Grangerous, okay? And so now the kids are really just wanting to have fun with this. Almost 80 kids stayed after school with Mrs. Granger that day. They filled her room and spilled out into the hallway. The principal had to stay late to help and they had to arrange two special late buses to get all the kids home. And the next day, all the fifth graders did it again. And so did a lot of other students, over 200 kids. Parents called to complain. The school bus drivers threatened to go on strike. And then the school board and the superintendent got involved. And about this time, the principal of Lincoln Elementary School paid a little visit to the home of Mr. and Mrs. Allen. She wanted to talk to them about their son, the one in fifth grade, the one named Nick. Chapter nine, chess. Hmm. Mrs. Margaret Chatham had been principal of Lincoln Elementary School for 18 years. She knew Mr. and Mrs. Allen because they had all served together on the building committee when the old Lincoln School was torn down and the new one was built six years ago. When she telephoned on the afternoon of October 1st to set up the meeting, Mrs. Chatham had asked Nick to be there too. It was 6.30 when she knocked and Nick opened the door. Good evening, Nick, she said. No smile. Hi, Mrs. Chatham, said Nick, backing away as she filled the doorway. She was a large person, as tall as Nick's dad, with wide shoulders. Nick guessed she would play linebacker on a football team because that's what his dad played in college. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Allen, she said, stepping into the living room. She was wearing a long black raincoat with a red silk scarf tied loosely around her neck. She kept her coat on, but took off the scarf and tucked it into her left pocket. She shook hands stiffly with both of Nick's parents before sitting down on the chair to the left of the couch. Nick's mom and dad sat on the couch and Nick sat on the rocking chair that faced Mrs. Chatham across the low coffee table. This is not an easy visit for me. We are having some trouble at school and it appears that Nick is in the middle of it. Here's a picture of Mrs. Chatham, the school principal, at their front door. Then, while Nick's parents listened, Mrs. Chatham laid out the story as she saw it. Nick encouraging the other kids to use his new word, Mrs. Granger forbidding it, the ruined fifth grade class picture, 
hundreds of kids staying after school, and a general feeling that there was a rebellion at school, with no one respecting the rules anymore. Nick watched his mom and dad while Mrs. Chatham talked, looking from one face to the other. His dad was listening carefully, nodding and frowning. He looked embarrassed about the trouble, but his mom looked kind of annoyed. And when Mrs. Chatham finished her story, Nick's mom was the first one to speak. But doesn't all this seem like a lot of fuss about something pretty silly? Nick sat quietly, but in his mind he shouted, Hooray for mom! Hooray for mothers everywhere! His mom wasn't annoyed with him. She was annoyed with Mrs. Granger. Maybe even annoyed with Mrs. Chatham. This was getting interesting. Mrs. Allen was still talking to the principal. I mean, is there really any harm in the children making up a funny word and saying it? Does there have to be a rule that a word like this may not be used? Mrs. Chatham sighed and said, yes, I suppose it does seem silly, but Mrs. Granger thinks that it's rather like keeping children from saying ain't. There have to be standards. That's why we have dictionaries. And really, the problem isn't so much the word itself, it's the lack of respect for authority. Mr. Allen said, Mrs. Granger's right about that. There have to be standards. We can't have kids walking around saying ain't, can we? And that's when Nick piped in. You know that big dictionary in Mrs. Granger's room? The word ain't is right there in the book. I looked it up and there it was. I don't see why I can't use a word if it's in the dictionary. Mrs. Granger even said that her big dictionary was the law. Nick looked from face to face to face. That stumped them all. He had just launched a first-class thought grenade. Well, uh, yes, but, uh, well, well, you know, as I said, the word ain't and even the word friendle, these are not the real issues here, said Mrs. Chatham. Mrs. Allen said, well, I think the real issue is Mrs. Granger's reaction to a harmless little experiment with language. It's an overreaction. Don't you think so, Tom? And Mrs. Allen looked at her husband. It was Mr. Allen's turn to look from face to face to face. He was lost. Uh, yes, well, uh, sure, I, I, I guess so. I mean, uh, it's not like anyone's being hurt. Um, I mean, it's not like vandalism or stealing or something like that. The sentence trailed off and he rubbed his chin and stared thoughtfully through the window on the wall behind Mrs. Chatham. And while the three grown-ups sat there in an uncomfortable moment of silence, Nick had a sudden vision of what was really going on here. It was a chess game, Nick against Mrs. Granger. Mrs. Granger had just tried to end the game by using her queen, Mrs. Chatham, in her black raincoat, the Black Queen. Nick didn't know it until the attack was underway, but he had a powerful defender of his own, good old mom, the White Queen. And the game was not over. It would go on until there was a winner, and a loser. Mrs. Chatham didn't stay much longer. There was a little more talk back and forth across the chessboard about how children have the right to explore new ideas, about the importance of respecting teachers and the work they do, about everybody needing to keep up standards and make school a safe place to learn. Then, Mr. Allen offered Mrs. Chatham some coffee and banana bread, but she said no thanks and I really must be going now. She thanked Nick's parents and they thanked her. Nick opened the door and said, Good night, Mrs. Chatham. Then the Black Queen put on her red scarf and walked off into the October twilight. Nick, I think we'd better talk a little more about this, said his mom, sitting back down on the couch. If I find out that you've been disrespectful to Mrs. Granger or any other teacher at school, then you will really be in big trouble. I haven't been disrespectful, honest. I did get everybody started using my word, but like you said, it's not hurting anybody. And I'm sorry if me and Dave and Pete got everybody to ask Mrs. Granger to borrow a friendle. That was mean, I guess. But she started it by making kids stay after school and write a hundred sentences just for saying my word once. All the kids like to use my word. It's just fun, that's all. Well, said Nick's dad, if it gets everyone upset and makes the principal come talk to your mother and me, then it must not be fun for everybody, is it? And I think you should just tell all your friends to knock it off right now. I mean, tomorrow. Nick shook, shook his head. I can't, Dad. It won't work. It's a real word now. It used to be just mine, but it's not anymore. If I knew how to stop it, I think I probably would, but I can't. 
and Nick looked at both of their faces to see if that idea was sinking in. It was, like I said, I won't be disrespectful, but I do like my word. And I guess now we're just going to have to see what happens. And the chess men, Nick's king and queen, had to agree. The game would go on. Mm -hmm.